So we want to move away from human created metadata and try to create metadata automatically. As it turns out, there are many common applications and tools that you might use that allow you to do this. The first is your digital camera. And now let's go back to that photo of a goat and the EXIF viewer that we were using as an example in Unit 4. Here's that photo of a goat that I took. And let's look at the EXIF data that that viewer has extracted from that photo. So if you remember, we talked about EXIF having a set of elements and values, what in EXIF are called tags, but of course we know better and we would call them elements and values. So let's take a look at this metadata. What do we have? We have the camera make and model. Camera make and model, which are probably captured by, from the camera's firmware. These are things that are not going to change at all over the lifetime of the camera. The make and model are consistent. We have date and time stamps, date and time stamp of creation and date and time stamp of modification. Those are probably captured from the camera's internal clock. And then we have the camera's settings, exposure, ISO, that sort of thing, that are probably captured from the camera's software, the settings that I set when I took the photo. So at some point in the history of this camera, when I first bought it, I must have set the internal clock. I honestly don't remember. I've had that particular camera for a long time, but I must have set those settings at some point. And I certainly set some settings when I took the photo. So in a sense, I generated some of this metadata, or at least it might be more accurate to say that that metadata is as a result of certain things that I did. But I didn't have to do anything for that metadata to be generated at the time that I took the photo. And that's the important point. It just happened automatically at the time of creation of that photograph. And you wouldn't even necessarily know that all of that metadata is there, except that we found a viewer that could extract that metadata from the photo. Or if you import your photographs into a photo editing application, that application can pull that EXIF data out of the photograph as well. Another common tool that you might use that automatically generates metadata is Microsoft Word. Again, a very commonly used application. So let's look at an application with a little bit of history to it. My Curriculum Vita. Now, if I click File Properties, then I get this window that shows me the properties for this file, my curriculum vita. Now, the values in these fields are straight from Word. I have not edited this in any way. So what we have is author, me, and company, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. I don't actually know where Word gets that data from, but this install of Word on my laptop is registered to the University of North Carolina, and the laptop is registered to me. So my guess is that Word pulls that data from the software license and the operating system. Now, notice that not all of these fields are filled in automatically. And also note that some of these fields map to Dublin Core elements. We have title, we have subject, we have author, which of course maps to creator. We have comments, which probably would map to Dublin Core's description element. And if I click on statistics, 
we get other fields that might map to Dublin Core. We get the date of creation. <clears throat> Excuse me. We get the date of modification. We get last saved by, which of course doesn't map to a Dublin Core element, but is a piece of provenance metadata. And then we get some basic descriptive statistics, word count, number of lines, number of paragraphs, etc. Basic counting that the application can do of the text in the document. Yet another application that automatically generates metadata is Adobe Acrobat. And this is the PDF of the slide deck for Unit 6 that you can download from this course site. And again, if I click File Properties, I see the properties for this file. And the description page has, again, metadata straight from Adobe Acrobat. I have not edited this in any way. And we get some of the same metadata that we saw in Word, things that map to Dublin Core. We get date of creation, date of modification, and we get some metadata pulled from the operating system. We get what version of the operating system, we get how many bytes large the file is, etc. So some of that metadata Acrobat can figure out for itself for example, what version of Acrobat this is and how many pages. And then there's some that's pulled from the file system that you're using. And if I click on the security tab, there's some metadata that's extracted from the settings that have been set in Acrobat, either by default or that I've deliberately set different than what the defaults came as. The point is, there's a lot of data about a file that you don't necessarily need to see as the creator of the file, but that the application creates and updates and the operating system creates and updates over the lifetime of a file. And all of that is metadata about the file. So metadata can be generated at the time of creation of a resource and updated every time that resource is touched. And if that application has a way to tack that data about your file onto the file itself or otherwise associate that metadata with the file itself, then voila, automatically created metadata. That's pretty cool. But what if you have a pre-existing resource or you don't have permission on a file to view the metadata or something along those lines and you want to automatically generate metadata anyway? Or what if you want metadata about a resource beyond what the application and the operating system can generate? What do you do then?